Hi there, this is Alan from Hyperstream here and in this video I'm going to show you how to secure a WordPress installation. Now what I've done, I've, I've picked up an old website, uh, one of my old blogs which I haven't really touched in a couple of years now so it's a little bit out of date and it could do with a little bit of uh, a TLC and I think security, securing because I'm pretty sure I've uh, when I set this one up uh, I probably didn't go through much of a security process when I did it so I'm actually going to show you how to secure uh, your site so we're going to go through a number of things um, the first thing I'm going to show you is how to how to install WordPress in a safe way uh, the next thing is going to show you how to how to protect your uh, your WordPress uh, content folders and admin folders uh, which plugins you should use for security there's a, a bunch of plugins which uh, I recommend and then we're going to move on to looking at you know what you should do about um, passwords and, and user accounts, and you know how to how to generate a strong password. And then I'm going to show you how to which which themes you might want to think about selecting because the theme that you choose and the plugins that you choose specifically for WordPress can have a have an impact. Uh, if you don't choose a, a theme or a plugin from a, a reputable author, you might lead yourself uh, into a few problems there. Uh, and then backups. We're going to have a look at backups briefly and how to how to back up your content and protect all your files and folders. Okay, so let's get started. So go ahead and download and uh, install the Acunex Word WP Security plugin. So if uh, we'll, I'm just going to show you how to do this from the the WordPress dashboard. So let's go over to WordPress. I've actually got an old version here at the moment. So one of the first things we'll, I'm going to do here. Uh, I'm not going to do it right now. Is we're going to update WordPress as well through the process of this, and uh, before we do that, we're going to back up all of our content and databases so to make sure we're doing things correctly. Okay, so let's go ahead and add our security plugin. Um, and actually, we're going to we're going to add a a few plugins here uh, right now while we're while we're adding plugins in. So um, WP Security Scan, I think that's the one. Yeah, so let's install this. Is it WP Security Scan? I think WP. Is that the one? Security Scan. Yeah, that is the one. Okay. Okay, so let's install this. And then a couple of other plugins, a few other plugins we want to install is uh, a backup plugin so the one I'm going to use for this uh, tutorial is uh, WP DB backup there are a bunch of different plugins for backing up but uh, this is the one we're going to use today um, so WP DB backup let's activate that and also the next one we're going to use is a uh, login lockdown and this is going to help uh, protect our um, this will stop people from from basically uh, having multiple attempts at logging in if they fail it out it will lock it down so this is going to help us out so we'll activate that and then the last one uh, we're going to install is WP Malwatch and this will scan your site um, every night for si signs of foul play and if there's any dodginess going on there so let's install this um, okay where is this now watch renamed it see sometimes they rename plugins so um, let's uh, just find out this one WP Mail Watch. Okay, here it is. Let's check this one. Uh, let's just check the description on this. Okay, I think that this one is a bit old, so let's find a new plugin. So, the last time I looked at some of these uh, malware plugins things uh, was a while ago, so this one is a bit outdated. So, let's find uh, a new plugin for, for scanning malware. Um, so, let's have a look WP malware. Malware. And 
Let's see now where. Okay. So, looking at this, actually, we're we're gonna we're gonna give this one a go. Um, I can see that it's uh, it's quite a reputable author. It's been downloaded um, about two hundred thousand times uh, and used by a number of people. So, let's go ahead and use this this particular plugin um, for this for the purpose of this tutorial. So, we we want to get rid of malware uh, and. I think we we need a plugin to do that as well. So let's go ahead and just do a search for that. Here we go. Anti -mal malware. That's the one. It's got five stars. Uh, reputable author. Uh, so we know that's going to be pretty safe. So. That's our four plugins. So we've got a, a plugin to back up our database. We've got one. I uh, was going to secure, uh, do a security scan for us, and then we're going to log, uh, do a, a login lockdown. Okay. So first thing we're going to have a look at is this uh, WP uh, security scan. So let's go on to the uh, dashboard. Uh, so this dashboard is just showing us some of the recent activity uh, of what's going on. Um, but we actually want to go into the WP Info uh, section here, and it's going to tell us. Uh, it's going to give us some suggestions. It tells us um, what server, what server we're running, what so software we're running, um, how much memory we're using, uh, and the version of PHP, etc. Um, so here's the the actual scan report. So it's telling me, um, obviously, uh, that we need to upgrade to the latest version of WordPress. So Let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to do that first. Uh, oh, before I do that, I'm going to make a backup. So let's go into our. Um, uh, we'll make a backup of our database. So that we're going to go over to our. If we make any, just a moment notice. If you make any major changes, you're going to update WordPress. It's always good practice to backup. Uh, I must admit, I don't always do it um, because uh, I know how to fix the databases. There's not a lot can go wrong, but. Um, it's always recommended to back them up. Uh, good practice. So let's go into uh, backup tools, backup, and here is uh, our databases. So we're going to uh, select all of these. Uh, so actually, here we've got a schedule backup. So what I'll do. Uh, I'm going to do this. We're going to schedule a backup. Um, do that right now, and then we'll also download uh, a backup for today. So let's, let's select all our tables that we want to back up, and I'm going to back everything up. So let's do this maybe. I think once a day uh, for this particular site. Uh, it's just it's not a really really important website blog. Uh, so I'm, I think once a day is is enough. So let's schedule a backup, and it's going to email this to my email address. So schedule a backup, done. And so right now I'm going to also just download um, uh, download this to my computer right now. So let's select everything. Oh, but oh yeah, here we go. I'm doing a silly way really. So hold down the shift key and if you scroll down to the bottom and then click click there and select everything. Uh and there we go. So I've now selected everything. I'm gonna back up my database to my computer right now. And that's going through the process there of backing up. So we'll just give that a minute. I'll just pause the video while it's doing that. Okay, so that's uh nearly done. Uh, I think it's now downloaded, so here's my uh, download file. Um, and that's on my computer, so I'm happy about that. So now we've downloaded our database, we're safe to go ahead and uh, update WordPress. So let's go ahead and update this now to the latest version. Okay, so uh, we click on the update now button. Uh, you can also manually do this through uh, through FTP if 
if your installation doesn't allow you to do this uh, via this method uh, you can download the latest version and do it that way um, you may not be able to do do it this way if you, your permissions don't allow you to do that so uh, you may need to do it uh, another method so that's now updated WordPress it looks like it's uh, gone through ok um, everything seems to be now refreshed so let's move on okay so we're going to come back to our uh, WP security scan plugin and just check to see if there's any other things we need to do okay so the next thing it tells us it already says that um, your database is not WP uh, XYZ so we're okay there uh, but I'm going to show you how what that means. So, if you noticed when I went to back up my database, um, let's come back over here, uh, back up tools, back up. You'll notice it says Alan underscore. Now your default will be a uh, default WordPress installation is WP underscore. So what that means is just adding a little bit of extra security to your database. Um, so you can just rename that and I think there is a tool actually within the uh, within the security scan plugin that allows you to do that obviously you've up you've backed up your database so now it's going to be safe to, to go ahead and do this um, but uh, so let's let's go ahead and do this so I'm going to show you how to to rename uh, your if you if your database is still WP underscore how to rename that uh, and make it more secure so Let's go back to our WP security uh, plugin, and actually, there's the database uh, tab. Um, uh, also, actually, yeah, the here's a, the act this security plugin allows you to back up the database uh, as well um, to do that. But here's where you can change the prefix. Um, so mine is currently Alan, and actually, you know, that's not that secure, probably not. So I'm gonna I'm gonna rename this right now. So um, yours might be WP, or should be default is WP, so it will look like this. So let's we're going to change this to something else, so something a bit more secure, maybe just a random a uh, few letters, yeah. Um, and obviously, it's going to be a lot more difficult for a, a hacker to uh, to automatically hop into your uh, WordPress database and then start changing things if it's not uh, the default. So start renaming I've already backed up so if you're going to do that just back it up again um, and it says okay all tables have been successfully updated uh, and we if I click on let's go back to the dashboard uh, we can see still see uh, my WordPress installation is still running uh, which means that uh, that was successful okay so we're going to come back here now and go on to the next thing and I uh, haven't got any startup errors, so we're okay there. Um, user admin was not found, and this was one of the things I was talking about was that uh, when you when you install WordPress, um, it will give you a default username of admin. So what I suggest is if what you would want to do is go over to the all users panel, um, and I've actually got quite a bit of spam users in here from somewhere. But you can see that um, uh, there is my admin account is actually is called my name, um, Alan Sun. And to be honest, actually, that's probably not even that secure. So I may want to go ahead and change this. So what I would do, uh, what you can do is, uh, if you just see the admin here, so what you want to do is create a new user account. So we want to add a new user. And we're going to change can you do it from from this plugin I don't think so I think you need to actually um, yeah you can hide the admin no okay so we'll do it the way I was gonna do it so we go into all users so you have a look for have a look for um, admin and clearly on my one it's not there but let's just say I want to change uh, my admin username now I can't edit this directly it doesn't allow me to do that um, it just doesn't allow me to change the username so what I need to do is create another account 
So I've got a second. You need you need to have a separate email address for this. So um, what you could do is either just change this temporarily, this email address on this account, uh, while you create your new one. So for example, I'm just going to uh, put another email address in here and update that. Uh, so I can use my same default uh, email address when I'm creating the a new account. So let's go to add new, and I'm going to call this. I'm going to just be a bit more random with this and call it Private Alan Son or something. Um, you can you can think of something yourself. Just um, you know. Don't put anything too obvious. I wouldn't use the site name, for example, this site name is called Adam Life. So I wouldn't use the exact site name, which is probably an easy guess for a username for a hacker that's trying to attempt to, to get into your site. Okay, so obviously just fill in the rest of your details as normal. Um, now the password. What you want to do is generate a strong password. Now what I do, I actually use, um, if you want to generate a, a strong password, um, you can use LastPass. Um, I have my regular password, which I'm not going to tell you, but you see that regular password is pretty weak. So let's change something. Let's just change it up. Um, it's not very secure, you know. And I'm not happy with it. So what I use is LastPass, and LastPass is uh, actually a, a complete um, password manager. But you can do a search for um, on on Google for strong password generator or something like that but but um, LastPass is really useful for for a number of reasons first thing is that uh, it allows you to uh, store all your passwords um, in your browser and you may, f may think that that's not um, not secure but actually it's, it's more secure than you might think because every time you type in your password on the keyboard potentially your computer might be infected with um, with a keylogger or something so that gives the hacker uh, even more chance of uh, detecting what your password is. So, great thing about LastPass is it stores your passwords securely, and then you're not having to actually type in your password. You can just click a button, and then it fills in the details for you. But also, the good thing about what I want to show you here was that you can actually generate um, a secure password. So here you can uh, just say how long you want the password to be. Let's just do maybe. Um, doesn't really matter, but let's try 20 for example. That's a bit long, but uh, and then we can we can generate that password. So I'm going to come here and copy that password, and then come back over to our installation. Where was we? And let's paste that in there. So here we've got a very strong password now, um, and because I've got LastPass installed what it's going to do when I click on add new user it will give me an option to, to store this password so I'm going to um, I'm not going to send the password to the new user by email because that's not very secure um, and I'm going to change this to administrator obviously because I want that to be the new administrator and then click on add new user okay so that's now added our new user in there and uh, here we can see LastPass has uh, detected a password change for this particular domain. So I'm going to click on Save. Uh, I'm going to click on Confirm, which is going to overwrite the original one, or I can click on Save New Site. So I'm just going to confirm this. And oh, there's quite a few things here. So I'm going to overwrite. Actually, no, that's, that's a new one, isn't it? So, whoops, I've now lost that. But okay, so let's go add this into. I should have clicked on Save New Site. Um, but let's add what we'll do. We'll just uh, oh dear, let's uh, go back. Where are we? Okay. So when you do it, make sure you click on the other one because it will be a set. So you will be saving a new site, and then it will save uh, your password for you. So let me just uh, show you how this works. So I'm going to log out. Um, just grab my username. Was it Alan? Life was it? See, I've now forgot my username. That's no good. Let's try to do a search. Oh, there we go. This one. So this is my new username, um, and I've got my password, which I am going to quickly put on a notepad for a minute. I'm not going to show you the password. Okay, so let's 
Um, okay, let's try this again. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna reset the password this time. I'm gonna use that same password. I'm gonna update the user. Um, and that doesn't work. Okay, all right. Let's log out, and I'm gonna log in with that new user. And then what we can do once we've logged into that is in as that new user, we can delete the original administration account. Uh, and there's an important process here um, because we don't want to lose all the content from that user. We want to transfer it over. Uh, so I've put in my username, I've put in my password, and I'm going to log back in as that new user account we've created. Okay, so actually I'm not going to tick that. Let's just log in. And now we've logged in with that information. Actually, I'll ask passes asking me if I want to save that new uh, yeah, password. I'm going to say yes. I'm going to save that. Uh, save it under there, and then and then there we go. Save. Okay, so now we can go in and delete that other user so we're going to delete the admin uh, account which is my original Adam Sun profile let's get rid of that and I've got a hundred posts currently that I've created so there's a lot of content uh, so what it's um, asking us to do is what do we want to do with this content so do we want to delete it all well I don't want to do that I want to just transfer it all over to my new admin account so I'm going to find my my username um, Alan's son. So there we go. Yeah. So we're going to all attribute it all back to um, me. We're going to confirm the deletion, and then that's now that's deleted. That's deleted the original uh, site. What I'll do, I'm going to show you a little bit later how to get rid of all this because actually this is an old site. Um, uh, which didn't have any protection and so you can actually see there's a lot of spammy uh, user registrations um, so let, I'll show you there's actually a plugin which can help uh, get rid of a lot of these things actually let's do that now um, so I'm gonna go into search for a new another new plugin this is not uh, part of the uh, the ones that I've already shown you and it's user spam remover and what this is going to do is going to search for uh, spam users and, and just clean up those those users. Um, so this is useful if you've got an old site and you've got you're having problems with these spam users coming in. I mean you could go manually delete them all, um, but you know I'd rather do it automatically. So uh, here we are. It's already detected a bunch of uh, spam users. It, you can see there's certain criteria here. You can whitelist some users which you, you know are not spam. Uh, but I know definitely on this blog that it's all spam. Uh, they're all a bunch of spam users. Um, so what we can do, uh, we could also check this box to automatically remove never used user accounts. Um, I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to go ahead and remove these. Obviously we've backed up the database so there's no problem there so I'm not, I'm not worried. Um, I mean if there was a problem you can always revert them back so let's just save the changes and that should now because it's got rid of um, a load of user accounts so let's go into here all users it's got rid of quite a lot um, there's only three pages there now but um, um, we can probably just go ahead and delete some of these uh, other ones which I know I'm pretty sure are spam. So it's not perfect but it will get rid of definitely a bunch of them then we can go ahead and just delete um, just check some of these I know I'm not real people um, I'm pretty sure so I'm going to just delete those yeah I'm happy to get rid of those um, and we'll just delete the content because I'm sure that the content also that they put on there is spam so uh, actually you know what everyone on here is is spam so uh, the only person I'm going to leave is it's me so just delete all those okay delete job done no nope. where did these come from no I didn't uh, select okay actually a little tip there is that it only shows you a certain amount per page so if you want to see more you can actually change this number up um, so, so it's only showing me 20 users per page 
there. So I'll just deselect myself, and then I'm going to bulk delete these. Okay, so that's a lot better. Uh, much cleaner now. I've got rid of all those spam users. Uh, we've tidied up. Um, we've secured WordPress. Uh, the we've updated WordPress. Uh, we've, we've secured the table. We've got rid of the admin user. Um, now, this particular um, the HD access file was not found in WP admin directory. Read more. This is not relevant to uh, my particular web server. Is because um, HD access is only relevant for Apache web servers. So this is uh, running Nginx. So uh, this particular plugin is not going to uh, in this particular instance. It doesn't. It's not going to make any uh, sense. However, I'll take you through the process anyway, and I can just go through the, the motions. It's not going to hurt my web server to do it. Uh, it's just not going to not going to make any difference. Um, so let's open this, and we'll show you how to do this. So here we are. We're gonna. It's going to go through our what we should do here on the HT access. So we want to create a. Uh, HT access file. So to create a H HT access file, um, you want to open up Notepad or just a very basic text editor. So I've got a Notepad here, and what we do, we'll just save this as um, we need to save this as uh, a file called .dot HT access. So it's .dot HT access. Okay, so let's just save that first, and this is going to become our uh, our uh, our file that we're going to put the, the details in that we need to put in there. Okay, so in our .dot .hd access, this is what we're saying we should put in there. So I'm going to copy all of this. I'm going to paste that into my .dot .hd access access file, and then. If we want to protect these things, okay, that's fine. All through the okay. yeah. So the instructions here are a little bit, uh, a little bit wishy-washy. Um, so tell you what, let's let's uh, come back to this, and I'll show you how to do this properly uh, a little bit later on. Okay, so I know we've skipped that that section of the um, uh, installation, but I'll need I'll do a little bit more reading on that because I've never I never need to really do that on my own sites. Um, all of our because we're on a secure server, uh, we don't need to do this. So I'll come back to this and show you how to do this exactly how to do it uh, once I've read through that. Okay, so. The uh, here the next thing is the user is currently configured to access the WordPress database. Hold it, private right to interact with database. Yes. Um, okay, so this would mean that um, we might have more rights than we need, uh, and it's saying that uh, we don't. This is all fine. So I wouldn't uh, expect you have any problems here either. Um, be very in the very rare occasion that you do. Um, and then it says WP index WP was found in this directory. Uh, it's found in all those directories. What happens if this particular if you do not have an index.php file in these directories? What this means is let me just show you what this means. So I'm gonna I'm gonna open up my um, I need to go into my FTP folders. So let's open up um, my server. So we log in. Where are we? too many things that I manage on here, so let's log in here. Here we are. Okay, so here I am logged into my site, so we're gonna go on to Hyperstream. Uh, Alan Life isn't it? There we go, Alan Life is the one we're working on. Okay, so we go into WP content and then we go into uploads so here it is index.php now what it means is if an in this it's actually a blank file there's nothing in it uh, there might be one little bit of text in there but it's nothing um, 
There we are. All it says, it's a little file, a PHP file, it says forbidden, uh, you don't have access, uh, permission to access this directory. So what this does, when you have an index.php file, what every time you, you visit a folder on uh, any website, the first thing the browser looks for is the index.php file. Uh, if you don't have that, it's going to show you uh, the d the contents of that directory. Uh, so we don't want to we don't want to show everyone the contents of this directory. So uh, let me just show you what happens. So if I now go to if I go uh, directly to this uh, folder right now, uh, it should give me a message saying, uh, "Sorry, this is a." a um, mission denied but if I remove that I'll show you what happens so let's go to WP content uh, forward slash uploads which is an internal folder of WordPress which I should not be allowed to access so there we are it's giving me a 404 error now let's see what happens if I remove this file um, or if I just rename it to something else which is not index um, I don't know okay let me just Grab the permission. Okay, so let's go ahead and rename this. I'm just gonna you don't have to do this, obviously. I mean, most of the default word, well, the, your default WordPress installation should. Um, why is that giving me permission denied? Um, uh huh. Okay, no, that's why. I just had the wrong permissions for that, so I'll just change that. Just retry that. Okay, so now that's renamed. Let's go back to this folder here. Now, if I refresh this, let's see what happens. Oh no, it's still giving me permission. Oh, uploads. Yeah. Well, this is why I don't need um, uh, some of this security stuff because I've actually got an, a different web server, um, and I have certain rules that's already set up to secure, uh, even secure it even more. So. Um, if I didn't have these additional security rules set up on my server and I just done what I did there um, what you would do see is a big directory listing of all my files and folders within the WordPress uh, content folder which is not a good idea you don't want to see that so let's just um, you want to make sure that's that's in place um, I mean with if you're on a cheaper web host or one that doesn't really take security seriously uh, then you might find that you know, you you know, it should be by default. You shouldn't have any problems, but obviously, it's worth just checking that, uh, checking that over. Okay, so I'm just going to rename that, put it back the way it was. Uh, although it doesn't really make much of a difference in this instance. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, there we go. See, if I renamed it, I put it back to where it was, and it's just given me that file. Um, but doesn't allow me to access it anyway with my with my uh, security settings on my server. Okay, so that's that. Uh, so that's all good. So what you want to do is aim for getting green ticks in all of these. And let me just uh, have a quick read through this uh, other post, and I will come back to you in one second. Okay, so we're back. And okay, I've read all, read through all of that. And so what you need to do. Is if you just go, you go, you can, you can follow the article obviously yourself. Uh, but basically, you copy this into a uh, HD access file. So uh, what I showed you before, the, the Notepad. So I'm going to open up my Notepad, um, and I've created an HD access file. And then oh, I'm going to save that onto my desktop for now. And then we need to create a HD uh, access, uh, HD passwords file. Um, and the way you do this is there's actually uh, a generator that you can use so on this article here it actually tells you uh, you can use an online generator or you can do it manually uh, here so I'm going to use the generator go through there and then you can put in a username and create a password uh, enter a password and create a HT passwords file there we go so uh, what we want to do is create a, a file called HT password and we go over to I'm going to open up my notepad so this is notepad plus plus I'm using so I just whoops so I've just created a brand new file and I'm going to copy this line and then come back over to uh, 
Notepad++. Uh, Notepad++, by the way, is a, is a, a program you can download. It's a free open source program, uh, and it's just, it's just uh, a lot better than than if you want to do any coding or text editing. Not word processing, but for for text editing and coding, it's uh, there's nothing really better than this. So, I'd actually recommend uh, for the purposes of creating H especially HTXS files. Um, uh, I know sometimes uh, if you're using uh, um, if you're using uh, other text editors, it may save it in a certain format, so you're better off using a, a very basic text editor like this, uh, or, uh, or well in this case, an advanced text editor, but allow it to save files in the exact format that they need to be saved in. Okay, so let's uh, we're going to call this file. It needs to be called .htaccess, and let's come back over there. Where would we I'll rename that? I'll save that to my desktop for now. And now, so I should should have two files. I've got the, the HT access file and the HT password file. And what we need to do is we need to upload this to uh, the. Uh, uh, if we come back over here, we need to upload it to the admin directory. Uh, so we need to password. We're going to protect that directory using um, uh, using those those files. So. Let's upload those. So we're gonna uh, in this. What we need to do, we actually do do actually need to have FTP access for this. So uh, I'm gonna select these two files uh, here, and we'll come over to our uh, our FTP program here, and we're gonna copy. So let's come over to our admin folder. And we're going to drag and drop those into there. So we're going to drag that into there. And I need to just change my permissions so I can access that file to do it. So WP admin. Okay. Okay, so now what you should have is in your your installation of WordPress, you want to have this within the WP admin folder, uh, these two files. Uh, now this is really only for Apache uh, web servers, so um, this isn't actually going to work on mine, but you get the uh, just want to show it, so you get the the actual process down. Um, you know, most of them, ninety percent of them uh, of the sites out there that are running WordPress are actually Apache. Um, so this is definitely uh, the way to go if you're securing that. Okay, so let me come back to my site. Um, Alan Life. There we are. Log back in there. Okay, great. Okay, so let's come back over to our info file. Um, now with this. I'm presuming it's not working because um, I've either have I called this right? I think it's probably because I have I'm running Nginx. It's just not going to show me the message uh, correctly. But let's just have a look. Ah, so this is what I was. Uh, there is a problem here. So when you create files, uh, especially with things like Notepad in Windows, um, you'll notice it, it's created this. Uh, it's got put an extra extension on there. It's called .txt. So, and you notice the one I created with Notepad++, it hasn't put any extra extension. So, Notepad has assumed that I want to create a .txt file, where in fact I don't want to have any extension on that. So here, I actually, I'm just going to rename this, and you can do it with Notepad, but you can just rename the file and, and get rid of the the extension, uh, and then now that should uh, detect it as a, a correct file so let's uh, refresh this there we go <coughs> so what have we learned uh, we've now learned how to uh, secure WordPress um, there's a few more things we need to do here still actually but uh, we've, we've got the basics of the security so you should be in a lot better shape than you was uh, when we started this um, 
we can continue on now and there is some suggestive permissions here that we uh, we could we can make more secure um, so let's go ahead and do this and apply the suggested permissions to these particular files okay so it's done it to uh, five four have failed so which ones have failed not found is it? Okay. okay so what I would say suggest actually is follow the advice here is apply suggested permissions um, and you could if this doesn't work this way then what you can do I I is manually do it fi via your FTT program or you, you know we're getting a little bit more advanced you know you could do it via um, I actually use um, to access our web server um, I use um, putty which is a, a way of um, connecting directly to our virtual private server now I'm not going to get into that right now so you're probably not going to have to touch any of that um, what you could do is if this does not allow you to do it then what I would suggest is contact your uh, hosting provider uh, and ask them uh, just tell them that send, send them this this particular report and say I, I need to um, you know I want to I want to lock this down I want to uh, secure this secure these particular folders and can you uh, can you help me do that so they should uh, show you how to do that and the way you do that will be via either the terminal or via uh, the FTP program so via FTP it's really simple um, if you've got the correct permissions to do it that is uh, so so here we are for example the root directory it says current permissions suggested permissions great so the ones which are not um, Working, so let's have a look at one which needs to be changed. I can't remember which is just so those are all correct, I think. Um, is it so let's refresh this. Page so really, the only one that it's got a problem with is this file. Actually, uh, all the ones on my server are fine. Um, it's just this particular file, so let's have a look why that is. I think ah, I tell you why. It's because it, I can't find this particular file because uh, again my server is um, it's not running Apache. Uh, that's why. Uh, so it's not going to find this file. But um, if you're running Apache, then uh, you can add uh, you 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 should have a h a dot ht access file there. Uh, if you don't, uh, you can generate uh, when you when you go to do your permalinks, uh, you can generate one, or you can just create one, um, create a not HT access file manually. So I'll just show you how to do that. Um, so we we'll just go onto WordPress, .ht access file, um, and here we are permalinks. So actually, when you when you go into uh, changing your permalinks, there's actually um, it will give you if you don't have a .ht access file it will actually suggest that you create one and so I'm just going to come back here permalinks so actually on my particular site uh, server w what you'll notice if you try to change this permalink structure and you don't have a .ht access file and you, you try saving it um, it will uh, come up with a suggested HT access structure. So it'll actually cop give you the code to copy and create a file for you. Um, if it doesn't, if it can't create it for you, so let's just. I don't think this is going to work. Let me just save this. Yeah. So for because I've I haven't got Apache running, um, it's not going to actually make any difference. So I'm going to skip this particular step, but. Um, just just follow the, uh, the the advice within the uh, plugin there, and you should be fine. If you are still having problems with with this, uh, by all means, you know, drop me a comment or a contact, and I can try and help you out and give some more uh, guidance on this. Okay, so I think uh, we're coming to the end of uh, the, uh, the tutorial. So there's a, a few more things we do need to cover. Um, yeah. Okay. So we've we've covered quite a lot there. Uh, we've we've covered 
uh, how to change your passwords, how to secure WordPress, how to back up your uh, database. Uh, we've looked at how to uh, protect all your, your folders and your plugins. Now, I'm going to come back on to now, uh, you know, which is quite an important one, is choosing themes. Uh, you know, if you choose the wrong theme, then you could you just you could just be opening the gate for a hacker to just walk straight right right in the door. So if I just go into this, okay, I'm going to go and find a new theme. I want a WordPress theme, um, and I could kind of, it's a bit like throwing a roulette roulette wheel and you know just just do a search for any old theme, and I'm going to do a search for a free WordPress theme, um, and I'm just going to find something I look like might like the look of. Um, I mean, a lot of these might be might be okay, but um, you know, I know that you know some of these are probably absolutely fine. You know, but what you might find is because they're completely uh, they're free, then you end up getting all this advertising stuff anyway in a lot of them. Um, and so if I just go download this one, you know, I don't know. I haven't really read about anything about the author. There's no there's no rating to say that uh, this is a reputable author um, or anything like that. So I've downloaded the theme. I'm not saying this particular one isn't going to be a good theme. It looks pretty good to me. It looks pretty decent. But without any way of vetting um, the the author or if this is a um, uh, you know a reputable theme, uh, then I could just be I could install this and then you know probably. The worst case scenario is you're going to get, um, uh, you know, you're going to let a kind of some, you know, somebody's written the code and there might be a back entry or back door into your site. Um, you know, but most likely a lot of these free ones, all they come with, they come with advertising stuff you have to keep on your site. And it's just, um, if you don't want any advertising, you know, just, just have a look. Again, look at the WordPress uh, codex. You know, so that's a good source of getting a free. If you want a free theme, just go to WordPress.org uh, and find um, and find a theme that um, has been recommended by lots of other people. So uh, the 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 ones that are are good, you know, that are the default WordPress themes. Obviously, you can use those. Um, and some of the ones on the other the codex here, I, I know a lot of these are going to be. Uh, these should all be safe to use. Uh, I know a number of years ago, WordPress did allow lots of anyone to who anyone who was anyone to publish their theme, um, and with that you, we was getting a lot of stuff, uh, a lot of advertising things, and a lot of backdoor codes and things. You know, so it's just got messy. So they actually cleaned up the whole uh, uh, themes directory um, a couple of years ago, and I know that uh, all of these themes. Um, you know, if you choose one of the most popular ones, are gonna you're gonna be in safe hands there. So here we can see a, a responsive. Um, this is a pretty a pretty decent design, uh, and, but you know it's basic. But I'm sure it would, for most people, um, if you're not looking to spend any money, then you know just just get one from the themes directory and you should be good to go. Okay, so but there is something to be said for actually paying for a theme and. I like to pay um, for themes uh, quite often, and the reason is because you get support with those themes. Um, so on Hyperstream here, actually, this is a paid-for theme. This is a theme I've bought. Um, you know, why, why would why would a theme why would a WordPress consultant be uh, buying a theme? You, know, you might ask yourself that question. Well, a lot of this I don't have the time. Uh, for myself to be um, uh, spending on building building designs, it's just just haven't got the time. But also, I know the developer, um, and I know that they do good work, and I've, I've seen the code and I understand it. Um, but I know lots of people have said good things about their work, so I'm happy to recommend them and also buy themes. So I, at the end of this, uh, uh, if you look below, you'll see some some links to uh, some some themes which I can recommend and the, the place I recommend you go buy them uh, is from Theme Forest. I buy all my themes from themeforest.net uh, now again with places like Theme Forest you know it's great 
but again you can still you can still even if you buy a premium theme doesn't mean it's going to be good um, and so I've learned through years of of buying themes and using free themes and different what which what, which ones are good so um, take my advice if you want to buy a theme have a look at the links below and just buy a theme from that um, I will get a small commission if you if you choose to do that um, but the ones that I uh, recommend are the ones that I have used myself and I know that are uh, are are easy to use and are regularly updated by the theme authors now if you're gonna if you want to go ahead and and just do a search yourself and try and find something come here onto uh, theme forest and then look for um, if you look in WordPress you could do it by a particular theme if you see something you like I always go for you know you want to look for keywords like responsive um, responsive means that it's going to uh, work on all devices so it means it's going to work on mobile tablet um, and all kinds of different themes so you see this is the theme that I use currently Enfold um, and it works on all different devices so there's a lot you can do with with these themes you can um, you can customize them uh, there's a lot of different customize op customization options you can uh, it's got sliders uh, you can change the order of things so what I like about these themes these responsive themes especially is um, there's a lot of features and a lot of flexibility to do what you want to do so you can pretty much make an entire new website with just one theme you know use the same theme um, you do need to buy a license each time you use the theme uh, so do check that uh, the, the theme author um, but you know you you should be good to go, and I'd recommend uh, Enfold, and you know there's a couple of other ones which I have recommended. Okay, so that's themes, um, and I think now, uh, and we've we've covered a hell of a lot here. So just to recap, uh, we've covered how to how to install WordPress. Um, into uh, actually no we've, we haven't covered how to install WordPress but if you look below I'll, I'll, there's a link to how to install WordPress and I'll uh, um, I'm not going to sh show you that in here but you've seen how to secure your WordPress installation once you've installed it um, and we've secured our our all of our our administration folders in WordPress we've changed passwords we've shown you how to create a secure password we've installed various plugins uh, so there's a couple of things actually here just recapping I haven't covered uh, the login lockdown I know we've installed those plugins I didn't really talk about them much uh, so just very quickly login lockdown uh, this will allow you to uh, stop the amount of failed attempts in login so you know a reasonable amount of time it, you know the default should be absolutely fine so here it's giving us free attempts to log in and then you've got to give a certain time which uh, not allowed to try again after being locked out. So here's uh, you know you can come in in here and um, uh, adjust these settings, but the default should be absolutely fine. Uh, we've looked at uh, how to back up the database. Uh, we've looked at WP Security Scan. Uh, I think the only other thing we didn't look at was uh, malware. So here's our anti-malware plugin. So let's go into uh, the scan settings. I think we should be fine for for default, and then you can just run a run a complete scan uh, on that and see if that comes up with anything. Uh, so once that, if you do find anything, um, then then obviously you know you can you can do a bit more research into that or remove the remove the uh, the suspect files. Now just where it says here, just a note, word of warning. Um, where it says potential threats doesn't mean that they're threats so don't go and just don't just go in and delete these files because uh, you need for example this file here wp-config you need this file if you delete it your installation will break so a lot of these things you might need so don't go ahead and just start deleting things willy-nilly uh, you, you do need to um, uh, be aware of that okay so I'm gonna leave the scanning and then see if it finds anything um, uh, 
Okay, so there we are, the scan has completed and looks like I'm lucky I haven't got anything infected. So, you know, obviously if this finds something, um, you're going to want to know about it. Um, and it's found potential threats, but it hasn't found any major, major things here. So I think I'm, I'm, I'm pretty, uh, pretty happy with that. So you can see that we're now, you know, we can never guarantee that the site, your site will never ever be hacked. Uh, you know, it's a fact of being on the internet that potentially if somebody really wanted to, you know, it's like anything. If somebody really wanted, wanted to break into your house, they could. Yeah. However, we've put enough security measures in place here to hopefully prevent, you know, maybe 90%, uh, you know, 95% of those to prevent them from happening prevent it from happening so you know I hope you do not find that you've got any issues with uh, I hope you've not had any security issues if you are viewing this you know I, I know it's a horrible thing uh, for for anyone to be um, f attacked uh, especially you know especially if you're if you rely on um, uh, your website and, and it's part of your business you know it's your livelihood if, if somebody comes and hacks that uh, and then takes your site down. Uh, clearly, it's going to cost you money, and it could cost you, uh, you know, your livelihood. So, you know, it's a good idea to to take certain precautions. Um, but with anything, always, you know, the basics. Do just do the basics. Back up WordPress. Keep it updated. Uh, if you can get time to do this, you know, it's only taken us an hour to do this, and and you know, if you just uh, you can use a checklist to just go through this really quickly, and you know, take won't you know, it'll be time worth spent because the time that it'll take you to to get your site back up um, if you get hacked and I can pretty much guarantee that if you don't take any steps to secure your installation, if you don't update WordPress, if you don't uh, do this uh, then you know you can pretty much guarantee at some point you're gonna get a, uh, you're gonna get hacked or you're gonna get a virus on your site and uh, and then the time that it takes to repair that is going to be a big headache so um you know but at least if you take backups it's a it's a lot quicker you know you can get things back but take precautions and then hopefully you'll never have to do that okay so i hope that's helped uh if you like this video and you think it's been useful uh please retweet it or share it on social media or facebook or whatever network you're on linkedin and uh, really be helping me out and yeah you need any if you know anybody that uh, needs some uh, WordPress advice or consultancy you know where to find me take care bye bye